Hello and welcome. This is my desktop SLS aluminum 3D printer that I made for manufacturing metallic parts. I'll be making a video about it shortly and how you can construct one, but I wanted to first talk about how to run the laser that I have at the heart of this. First, get yourself a pair of high quality laser safety glasses from Survival Lasers. Stay away from Chinesium knockoffs. Styropyro did a great video explaining just how useless some of these knockoffs can be. Remember that going blind will cost you a lot more than the 20 or 30 dollars you'll save. This is a 50 watt FAP 800 attached to a CPU cooler. You can find these lasers used on eBay for approximately 100 to 150 dollars depending on the wattage. I paid 120 for my 50 watt unit used. Unfortunately, to purchase them in bulk, new from the manufacturer, you'll have to pay about $1,000 to $3,000 a laser. The FAP800 series ranges between 30 and 70 watts. The data sheet provided by Coherent has a lot of good information on it, so go ahead and check it out. To drive this laser, we'll need a 65 amp, 2.2 volt power supply. I found a high amperage 0 to 5 volt variable power supply on eBay for approximately $100. It works very well for this application, but I can't tell you how long it'll last. You'll also want to look for a used fiber optic cable made by Coherent. This particular version is armored, meaning it's very difficult to break. These cables have an SMA connector on it, which allows us to connect our accessories to our laser. You'll also want to look for a lens or a culminator that is SMA compatible. The lens on the left was manufactured by Coherent and I purchased it used, while the lens on the right is Chinese and actually overheated and destroyed one of my cables because of its low quality. Don't touch the surface of any optics or the ends of your fiber optic cable with your bare hands. Doing so can damage them by leaving organic residue which will later cause the system to overheat. While we're on the topic of not letting your equipment explode, make sure to cool the laser adequately. I really like these CPU coolers for the job. Make sure that your cables are actually a thick enough gauge to allow the current required to pass without heating up too much. This was one of my first mistakes. Slowly increase the voltage until you see the amperage drawn increase. This means that you're in the conduction range of the laser and you should be getting an enormous light output in the infrared range. If you have a lens attached to it, at this point you'll be wielding the hand of God as you char and destroy and vaporize pretty much any material you're pointed at. I'll be honest, playing with this handheld lightning bolt from Zeus is the most fun I've had since I figured out how to buy surplus Russian military armament from the deep web using Bitcoin. Using this laser, I've been trying to center it together aluminum powder to 3D print. However, the results have been mixed thus far, but I believe this is not the fault of the laser, but rather the fact that I'm not using an inert atmosphere to conduct my experiments. I'll keep you updated on the project as I make progress. While this laser is not the death ray I've always dreamed of owning, it comes very close. But why settle for second best? Eventually I plan on purchasing as many of these 105 watt laser diode rays as humanly possible, then mounting them to the back of a pickup truck and using them to shoot down North Korean satellites for fun because I was bored. I'm sure this ends well.